Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Haroja Shai. Hello, Haroja Shai here with um, this review of 408, which I really enjoyed. A nice uh, palate cleanser. Uh, the name of the episode is uh, Requested Timeouts. Uh, this is F Society RC Podcast. Again, I'm Hiroja Scheib, the moderator of, your, of this channel, and this is my review. 407 will come out. It's just, it's a lot personally for me to review that episode. Um, so this episode, pretty much, I'm going to break it up in two parts. I'm going to deal with the Elliot storyline, the Elliot Krista wrap-up, if you will, from 407. And then we'll do with uh, my favorite part, the Dom and Darlene engagement. So, <clears throat> leaving at the end of a 407, Veer's dead on the floor. <laughs> Krista's trying to get Elliot to snap out of his very um, big revelation. Uh, he's seen another altar, which is a younger version of himself, which the audience has been seeing for some time, but Elliot himself really kind of hasn't quite seen it, except for maybe the first season of the show where he was having that big epic talk towards the end of the the, the season with uh, Mr. Robot and yeah <clears throat> so Mr. Robot is uh, completely gone uh, or at least for a little bit uh, so Chris is trying to snap Elliot out. She's panicking because Veer's two two companions, Peanut and uh, oh, I forgot. Javier, are down below and they're gonna come up, see Veer dead, and they're Gonzo, right? So she's able to basically physically somehow get Elliot to move and go down some side stairs. Javier and Peanut go up because Peanut needs to use the restroom and they really want to know the conclusion to the story. You know, they were left at like kind of a cliffhanger, if you will. So they go up, they see the Veer is dead, <laughs> they do what any gangster does, they take the, the wallet and they bounce. Um, of course, Chris is able to pull Elliot and takes his backpack, which is very nice of her, if you will, very plot convenient. <laughs> you know, they're just not booking it. Um, and they go to the police station, the nearest police station. Uh, Chris is there with Elliot. He's just kind of coming together. One little side note that when they were in the cab and Chris like, because now cabs have like all this electronic stuff all around and stuff. It's either, even the Uber and Lyft cars have them sometimes. Uh, either Ford or not. Like, particularly, like, I guess you could say major cities is like constantly advertising, you know, what's around you or whatever. Uh, there's Tyra Willick. Always there for Elliot, if you will. Always there in the background. He was there on the bus station when Elliot was hoofing it uh, across town to evade the police. And he's there again uh, talking about, I believe, eCoin or at least eCorp. And uh, Chris turns off the, the monitor. They go to the police station. And Elliot kind of gathers himself together a little bit. He kind of snaps out of it. And they have a conf conversation, you know. Krista kind of apologizes for doing what she had to do but basically she had to do it to order for them to survive she wants to continue to see Elliot now that he's had this revelation she wants him to know that he is not alone that he can get the help that he needs she's she knows she's not taking him like I said in my live review into the police station because that's just going to be way worse for him she wants to assure him that things can get better that he is not again not alone that they can do this um that he can live with what he's been really living with really and address those issues um she she um hugs elliot and hug, elliot hugs her back which is a big thing for him because he doesn't like to be touched and we we know the reasons why for that um they basically part ways Elliot has his backpack and she knows he needs to go do whatever it is he needs to do. And Elliot sees his younger altar and starts to follow it. And it takes him back basically to the museum, a place where he used to hide all the time. 
And we learned from the opener that Elliot, when he was a kid and he ran away with Angela to that museum, that, which is the big old map, you know, miniature map of uh, New York, and a place that Angela and Darlene knew that he likes to hide out sometimes when he has his episodes and breaks. Um, he hid an object, something that was going to protect them. Um, he was talking to Mr. Robot, if you will, even though we don't see Mr. Robot. Elliot was talking to that altar. And he hid it, it says, for our protection. And he's like, Angela's not going to find it, but, you know, when we need it, if we have to, we can come back here. And, um... We find out through the course of this, as Elliot follows his altar and starts talking to him, his younger self, like, why are we here? What is the purpose? I, you know, he's still wrestling with his, the revelations and his altar says, you, basically, you need to follow me. And he goes to that little hiding spot that we saw in, in the opener and he goes, points to it and Elliot goes and he is still there. He goes in there and it's a, a wallet. It's a Mr. Beavis and Butthead wallet, so something definitely from the 90s. And he opens it and it's a key. And the altar is telling him, you know, because Elliot is like raging. It's like, you know, I didn't fight back. I'm so sorry for the horrible things that happened to you. You know, I was weak. You know, he can't deal with the revelation. And his altar is like, you weren't weak. You did fight back, but you were a freaking kid. And basically what he had done was he hid a key, a key that we have seen before in the dream sequence about keeping the monster away, uh, which has, n oh God, this sh the rewatch for this show, I'm, I'm going to rewatch it when the show is over from the beginning all the way to now uh, is going to be like, like, I know there's been so many layers that we have seen as audience members and fans of the community about particularly about the Darlene Don Plain theory or just like what the the hell White Rose is doing. Uh, the fact that um, I have a link in the show notes uh, to Joho, one of the very key reviewer, was able to from uh, the Tyra Wellick revelations uh, when he was in the cabin and stuff that the, the terrorist attack was 71 buildings blowing up uh, Certain things that you that have been there in this in the show uh, Has led to certain revelations within the season and then later seasons uh, like the giraffes like Angela saying You know giraffes were like in the background and when associated with her particularly when she went back home to, to her father's place and Now certain stuff that was interpreted one way is going to be seen completely in a different light and certain other little tidbits are going to make more sense I guess you can say now that we have the complete picture but Elliot upon seeing this key and that revelation from his alter self realizes that the things that happened to him the revelation from 407 that happened to him that yes he was a victim and it was a terrible terrible thing that was an ongoing terrible thing until his father died which makes me think and I'll, I'll save it towards the end about uh, Edward Alderson's death um, that he did fight back that he wasn't passive that he wasn't he didn't resist and that he did what he could as a child and this kind of bolsters Elliot a little bit realizing that he just didn't do anything that he did fight back and that he's capable of fighting back if you will and while he's a victim he he has the power within himself to try to alter his circumstances or try to fight back if you will and so he heads back to um all safe and he gets into setting up the hack that darlene had already done a lot of the legwork for him um, from when they were in the server room and all they have to do is go to the location which they have an hour to so it's like around 8 o'clock um, 8 o'clock on Christmas Day still so we have one more one more episode they're squeezing out of here of Christmas Day uh, to get to the meeting and the meeting is supposed to occur at 9 o'clock they did and I'll show you here and thanks to um, 
ARG Society, you know, they were able to pull it up and you can see that part of the hack was when I guess they're going to get the funds as part of his script, uh, they're going to go to a, a Bitcoin address with the one, which is what, um, at 2015, that's what it was. It's, there, there was no bad chat addresses or SegWit at the time. So it was the legacy one address, if you will. Um, <laughs> and it's an actual Bitcoin address. And there is a little bit of Bitcoin in there. Um, as you can see again. So, um, so we have that as part of the hack and Mr. Robot appears again. And he's coming very apologetic because now Elliot knows things and Elliot, he's talking, Mr. Robot is talking. I surprised him Mr. Robot is back. I didn't think he would come back. Uh, but he, he tells Elliot, you know, I'm not your father. And Elliot's like, yes, I know you're the father I, I wanted, I, I needed. You're, you're not that monster that, and stuff. And uh, Elliot breaks down and he's like, I can't live with this revelation. I can't live with the things that have been done to me. And it's too painful for him. He can't go on. He's basically breaking down crying. And um, Mr. Robot try, does his, what his purpose is, is he tries to comfort Elliot. And that's pretty much where we were left off with him. He's basically just like, think of it of like when you drop a cup or an object and you like kind of glued it together you needed to get going or shoes like you gotta get these shoes that you have uh, to last you you know a couple more months because the budget's tight you don't you know family doesn't have money so you're like taping it and uh, lacing it up and gluing stuff together and trying to make it you know appear that there's no holes even though there's a hole in the bottom trying to make it work when you put a little cardboard trying to keep your 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 shoe together as long as you can like with duct tape and string and um this is the part where ellie is at where basically they go and he's just gonna shatter really um the only thing going is probably like he needs to save his sister and he kind of needs to do it to save the basically save darlene if he can't save himself he's still playing the hero um like I said in my live review, I'm glad that Krista has lived. Hopefully she'll live to the rest of the end of the season. Because thus far, people associated with Elliot have not lived. I, you know, I jokingly say that basically the flipper, the dog, is the only one that's going to live. Um, but it looks like Krista survived. She's in the police station. Which makes me think that the Dark Army eventually is going to um, know about Elliot with the circumstances and about Krista. I don't know if that's gonna put her in further danger or it's just gonna help reveal Elliot's location. Um, speaking of Elliot's location, so no price, no white rose. We're at Janice, Dom, and Darlene. So we kind of pick up where we left off uh, there in the apartment, if you will. Um, it's kind of have a meanwhile thing where we're certain events are paralleling what's, ha what's happened to Elliot in the apartment in 407 and his activities in 408. And basically, uh, Janice has Tom and Darlene tied up. Whew. Um, Darlene's saying, like, I don't know where my brother is, he doesn't tell me shit, which is true. Dom is like, you need to believe her. You know, she doesn't know anything. The phone is erased. And Janice is like, yeah, I don't know. And she like brings out her tools of the trade. She's like, basically, you know, here's the thing. You know, we need your brother. We need you to restore the phone. And you're going to tell us where Elliot is. And Darlene's like, I'm not going to tell you where Elliot is, you psychopath. You might as well just let me go. There's nothing I can do for you. And um, Janice takes her one of her knives and stabs Dom like no hesitation, hardcore, right in the chest. Dom falls to the ground and starts bleeding. And Janice explains what's going on with Dom. She's like, I pretty much collapsed one of her lungs. She's gonna be bleeding out. And um, you gonna tell me where your brother is? And Darlene's freaking out. I don't know where my brother is. 
I don't know anything. He doesn't tell me anything. Tom's like, oh, what are you doing? You know, uh, she doesn't know anything. And Janice is like, you, you know, you two kind of know each other. You know, you have a thing going on. And Darlene's like, there's not a thing going on between us. Yeah, I, you know, there's a connection here. And um, Janice is getting a little frustrated with Darlene. The fact that she, you know, God was bleeding out of here. She's still not giving things up. Um, there's a few things that you know they did in this this particular sequence that I, I think they're messing with us as an audience as I spoke to, about in the in the live reaction. When we get initially into the apartment, they they peer out uh, Angela's you know window and you can see a plane flying overhead. Uh, Jada says he stopped like blue skies, you know blue skies here, Dom. You know things are going great and amazing. Uh, <clears throat> And, um, <laughs> uh, so, because that, the whole theory is that, you know, if you're unaware that Dom and Darlene, who's been going since season two, are supposed to die together in an, in an airplane because both of them have had imagery and images of planes associated with them individually and together. And I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's a big old tease. So we have Dom bleeding out of the phone. Darlene's not giving anything up. She's calling Janice all sorts of names. Janice is like, oh, you're a little feisty one here. And she goes, you know what? I'm just going to call my guy and just have Trudy get it as a, like a fish. And Dom's pleading, no, don't, you know, don't do that. You know, if you do that, you don't have, what, any leverage over you? Yes, I know that. But, uh, you know, times are, are what they are. And she goes, uh, you know, who's... Let's see, there's four kids, eight, you know, eight adults, plus your mother, there's 13 people. And, um, 13 people. So Dom's pleading don't you know, to Janice not to kill her family. Darlene's like, you know, don't do that, you know, you're a psychopath, what are you doing? She's, you know, they have no choice, you know, I, you know. And, uh, Darlene, you know, before, um, anything can really happen she goes I'll, I'll do it I'll, I'll restore my phone and as this is kind of going on we we see this sequence where these men are coming to um, Dom's place and it was a little off when I saw that that they were coming in and they didn't have the F society not F society but the dark army mask on but I thought maybe because of the neighborhood or something like that that would have been too conspicuous big red mask I, I I don't know I, I was like I thought that was a little off so these men come in and they basically you know um, take all of um, Dom's family tie them all up um, this is one of the last sequences from the first season trailer that we haven't really seen any revelations of we now know that we suspected that was Dom's family confirmation to that um, so basically, you know, Janice is given the go-ahead to take Dom's family. Uh, Darlene starts, you know, restoring her phone so that they could find where Elliot is at. Um, Elliot, she gives him the signal location locator. Uh, they send a dark army operative out to basically Krista's place to the apartment. Um, the dark army guy calls Janice, let him let him know that there was a body found at this place, but no Elliot. Um his phone was there. You can say. Um but uh he doesn't have any more information at the moment but he's gonna find out more stuff. Only that, you know basically, you know, Vera's definitely dead and um the body's not Elliot. So Janice is very upset. She goes, he didn't give me Elliot's location. I did give you Elliot's location. I gave you the locator for his phone. She goes, well, that's the location for his phone, not Elliot. And then Danny's like, I don't know where my brother is again. I doesn't tell me anything. I can't tell you anything. You psycho bitch. Don't do what you're going to do. And Dom is like, I, you have to believe her. I know when she's lying. She's not lying. And Janice is like, yeah, well, I'm going to call her bluff. I'm going to see whether or not she's actually not lying by killing your mother. And uh, Janice goes and calls 
her dark grimy operative again that's holding um, Dom's family or so Janice thinks and the dark grimy operative is not picking up so Janice calls the phone again and Tom's like oh they're not picking up are they and then Janice turns around because Janice has been walking around this apartment like pacing and pacing and it's like this really like this very like kind of like white sharky type of a way you know just piecing around this apartment and it's very very tense as she's like circling around her prey toying with him basically is what she's doing and the two guys at the dark army guys are like they're they're in the apartment but they're like they're not really part of the conversation they're just the henchmen if you will and janice is like why would you say that dom dominique and she goes well maybe because um Someone's been trying to call me and I've been missing phone calls on the phone. So Janice goes to um, Dom's phone and sees that she has 14 missed messages. So Janice picks up the phone, calls calls back the number, and he goes, Hey, love! And it's the Irish guy. The Irish guy that that um, Dom has uh, been, had an eye on about disappearing people and basically we find out she was the one who made sure that he got out in exchange for protecting her family. He goes, I love, I got you, you got your family, I'm gonna head out to the safe house and Janice's like, who's this? And he's like, who's this? And he goes, this is Janice. And he's like, oh, the Dark Army last. Okay, and Janice's like, I don't think you realize the situation you're in and what you've done and the people and he's like what I've done I uh, basically killed all your guys and I'm um, gonna do finish my job and uh, ta-da <laughs> and Janice is like super freaking pissed <laughs> and she's like basically what Dom had done and it kind of gets to where um, you understand why she wanted Darlene really to kill her because I think she had set up this rescue mission beforehand. She knew as soon as she was going to track down Elliot and Darlene that one, she wasn't going to kill them and probably not turn them into the Dark Army, but that she had to protect her family. And in order to do that, she gave this revelation to the Irishman about the two vans that have been basically parked at either end of the street to let them know that these guys are bad, you need to take them out, and then when a phone call or anything comes in to um, take her family and take them to a safe house and get them basically the hell out of there, if you will. And which is what they're doing. They got them all tied up, they're in the back of the van, they take me taking them to the safe house. And I guess, you know, with Dom being dead or whatever by either Darlene's hand or something, um, you might have been able to help seal the fate of her family, making sure they're still alive, that the Irishman's job was complete. Um, so Janice, you know, gets hung up by this very mouthy Irish dude who doesn't care about the dark army or anything like that. and. You know, some people were like snickering a little bit about that, like he doesn't know what he's talking about. But I thought about it for a second. It's like, you know, the IRA, <laughs> it's very similar to the Dark Army. And I think this guy's probably got ties to that. They're, they're known to have people everywhere, for one. Uh, they're known for their retaliations. And three, for being very pretty efficient. So if you're going to have the... IRA versus Dark Army. I think they're pretty even Steven here. Even with the Dark Army, you know, having like uh, the Chinese national state back in them, uh, the IRA has, in some sense, like yeah, quarters of the Irish government that's been the, kind of the, the provisional government and then eventually the government kind of been alleged for years, you know, if you will. But they, they have some backers there, you know. And even the American government to some extent back the RA. It's a whole messy situation. Um, so I, I think he has no worries from the Dark Army. Just personally, I just don't think so. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Because as Janice is having this conversation with the, the Irish um, underground, underground railroad dude, basically, uh, she pulls the freaking knife out of her chest. And one of the Dark Army's guys is near her, and um, it's actually in front of her. And she slices at his leg and slices a ligament that causes him to fall. So he's like collapsing, 
like right off the top or behind her and um she then grabs his gun shoots the second dark army guy across the freaking hallway shoots janice and then boom shoots the third dude before he can even get up and really react and then she is basically laying down collapsing darlene is able to shimmy her way out of the the the, 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 the her situation goes to dom and starts covering her chest and, and trying to cover up for you know the big old ass wound in her chest and she's bleeding out even more dom goes you know you need to get my phone and she goes you know no she says go get my phone so she gets the phone from janice she, uh uh dom calls it in officer down gives her location and then she tells darlene you need to leave and darlene goes i can't leave you like this and Dom's like, you can't save everybody. You need to go and you need to take these bastards down. <laughs> or my family is basically definitely going to be dead. So Darlene leaves. Darlene leaves Dom bleeding out on the apartment floor with in Angela's apartment with three dead Dark Army operatives. Whew. And that's pretty much the episode. I mean, it's very intense. It was a nice palette cleanser Sheena's got it um Dom basically went John Wick on people and I don't think that was like a Dex and Maka or whatever or like some weird oh plot device I think Dom is like one of those people that probably went to the range on a consistent basis and knows what she's doing and I think that I think Dom's going to live. I think there's going to be consequences. I'm not sure about her family, but the tension has wrapped it, or has ratcheted up, if you will. Uh, the police are probably definitely going to look for Elliot. No matter what Krista says in the police station, they're probably going to be looking for Elliot. Uh, the Dark Army is definitely, you know, Elliot doesn't know this, but probably is definitely looking for Elliot. Darlene needs to convey that information now that her phone is restored, find her brother, and finish his hack. Um, somehow they have to do this without the Dark Army being aware that they're out there in the wild, if you will. Which I think, given the consistent communication that the Dark Army has had with its operatives, I don't think they have really that much time. I don't, definitely don't think like an hour before the meeting that they have this much time. Um, so we'll see what happens with 409, what all this, you know, comes down to. Um, you know, Elliot and Darlene have got to meet up with each other, and Elliot's a big old mess. He knows that the things that happened to him, which Darlene's always known the whole time, but, you know, for obvious reasons, never really fully had that conversation or disclosure with her brother because that's the cause of his pain and his mental breakdown. Um, and plus, like, the Dark Army's after them. They know where, where we're at, and maybe possibly where we're at or what's going on, and we need to really do this hack. Um, let's see. Okay, so Edward Alderson. I've seen this theory that is going around that maybe Alder, Elder Alder, Mr. Alderson never had cancer, that he wasn't actually dying of it, um, and that maybe he was being poisoned and possibly being poisoned by Elliot is my theory or um poison in general might have been in the popcorn if you will because i only didn't have that up, some of that popcorn <laughs> um that might have been a way that elliot fought back as he killed his father um but there's some weird stuff going on with edward alderson and i now that with the revelation i guess um, when i do my theory episode we will talk about that uh but i i don't I do think that maybe Edward Alderson did not have cancer, and I do think that there was a lot of lies attached to him. And there's just some other threads about him that um, 
need to be revealed. One, what was in the, the safe, the, the mother's safe deposit box? Um, did it have anything to do with White Rose's device? And how much of the architecture was Edward Alderson responsible for in making the Washington Township plant device? Uh, other than that, I'm, again, I really, again, don't really know where the direction of the show is going. I think it's pretty amazing they've been able to stretch out Christmas Day for five episodes now. Yeah, and um, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season, so we're at 409, 10, 11, 12, 13, so four more, you know, five more episodes to go. No breaks. It's going to end right around Christmas time. Um, which is great because I don't think I could, like, some shows have, like, this mid-season finale thing. I, I don't know if Mr. Robot did that. What I would do myself if we had to wait for January. Um, but, yeah. So, that is my review of 408. Time out requested. I'm kind of glad that Mr. Robot's back, but I, I, I'm gonna be sad in that fella for a while now. Don't like the fact that he was talking to us this whole time, and then finding out certain aspects about the revelation, which I will talk about in 407 when I do that review. But uh, I think he does have Elliot's, you know, stuff, his attention, best intentions, but yeah, be sad in that man that altar for a while now. Even with the comfort he gave Deli and I'm I'll be like ah, man, just maybe go with the kid altar. Something something else. Something better maybe. But we'll see. We'll see what the four oh nine gives us. So this is Rosa Shine, the moderator of this channel, F Society RC Podcast. Logging off for now and until next time friends.